I did it guys. Do you see this piece behind me? Do you see what color it is? This is not a joke, this is not a test. This video is going to be me painting white. Well, it's drop cloth, so it's kind of like a warm white. But you guys didn't think that I was just gonna paint a piece of furniture white, right? There's like way more stuff in there. Just wanna show you really quick. Let's get close. Let's use our zoomy. Oops, hold on, zoomy. Zoom, zoom. Oh, you guys see that crackle? You guys see that aged? Oh, I'm gonna show you all that. You guys wanna see how to do this? Stay tuned. If you are new here, my name is Kristana, so welcome to my channel. If you are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out. Everything I use will always be in the description below. So today I feel like I'm doing something that may shock quite a few people because I am super colorful and I usually use a lot of color and texture and things like that. And this dresser is going to be a white shade, but I'm not just gonna paint it white. Come on, you guys didn't think I was just gonna paint it white, did you? I am going to actually age it. So I'm gonna show you how to age furniture, and I'm also going to show you how to paint furniture white, how to properly paint furniture white so that you don't get bleed through, and, <clears throat> and we're going to distress this piece. So even though this is not normally what I normally do, I don't tend to do whites, we are going to do a bunch of other stuff on this and I just think that this is such a big piece that this really is the perfect finish for it. So if you guys want to see how I do that, stay tuned because we are going to get started by prepping this piece. Just like all my other pieces, the first thing that I'm going to do is prep it with Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. I'm going to clean this entire piece. And then after I'm done cleaning it, I'm going to go over it and rinse off the white lightning with a clean rag and clean water to get any residual off so I don't have any adhesion issues. I'm also going to remove the hardware and then I just put them in these little tubs so that I can keep them and I won't lose them. So that's what I'm going to do is also take off all the hardware. You can see that this finish, even after cleaning it, is still pretty shiny. And so I'm going to go ahead and do a scuff sand on it to get some of that shininess off. I do this so that the paint will adhere much better. For me, it just is an insurance policy. It makes me feel better. So with these finishes that are super shiny with the thick lacquer, after cleaning them, I also do a scuff sand. That way I know that that paint is going to adhere really well. After I'm done scuff sanding, I wipe off all the excess dust with a microfiber cloth, and then my piece is ready for the next step. Because I'm going to be painting this piece in a white shade, I'm going to be using a blocking primer. For this, I'm going to use Dixie Belle's Boss and Clear. The reason why I'm using clear is because I will be distressing and using crackle and I want that wood to show underneath. So I still wanna have a blocking primer so I don't have tannins, but I don't want it to be colored because I want to be able to see the wood underneath. So I am just applying a coat of my boss. I'm gonna wait a few hours, do a second coat, and then it'll be ready for my paint. It does go on kind of a, like a little bit with a tint of white, but it will dry clear. Okay, so here comes the crackle. If you guys have never used it, it's a really thick product. And what it does is it creates a crackle. But here's the thing. 
you need to make sure you stir it and you're going to apply it directly to your surface. So for this, I want to see the wood underneath. And so I'm going to apply it straight on top of the wood. I have two different ways that I'm putting it on. So one, I'm actually using a plastic spatula. I haven't done this before, but I just kind of want to see if I'll be able to spread it a little bit further and the difference. But if you don't want to use this, you can just use a cheap chip brush or in one section, I use a little stencil brush. So I'm putting it on. I don't want it super thin thick because I want it to dry. It will dry and look shiny. So just be aware of that, that even if it looks shiny, it's, it may be dry. It's going to dry with a gloss on it. So give it a few hours to dry and then you're going to do the next step. Going into this with the crackle, I want you to know that it doesn't really matter how you put the crackle on as long as you dry it before you add your paint over top of it. When you do your paint over top of it, that is when it really matters how you apply your paint. And you'll see that in a little bit when I go over that next step, which is putting the paint on top of my crackle. So on this drawer front, my crackle is dry. You can see how it's a little bit shinier in some spots. I'm gonna load up my brush with just a little bit more paint because you only wanna go in one direction. You do not want to back brush because you will erase the crackle. So go in one direction and don't overwork it, okay? So you can dab a little bit if you need to fill in spots, but you see how I started at one end and I only went over it twice, then leave it alone. If you mess with it too much, you're gonna mess with the crackle. So right now, what I'm going to do on this piece is I'm just going to activate the crackle. As soon as a, the paint touches that crackle medium, that is when it's going to activate. So I am going to go over all the drawers and all over the piece where the crackle is, and I'm going to paint over top of that first. So trust the process, because you're gonna see, it's gonna look really crazy at first, but I'll show you how to kind of fill it in and make everything look more organic. You can actually start seeing the crackle work. So that's really, that's a really fun thing is watching the crackle kind of do its thing. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this drawer front now that the crackle is dry, this is dried, and I'm going to fill in everything. So go into the little areas where there isn't crackle and just paint like you normally would. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually butt up against the areas with the crackle and kind of stipple it to get it a little more full so that way it has more coverage with the paint. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush and have just uh, ever so slightly paint on it once I get all the paint off and fill it with the other areas. You can do almost like a dry brush over the crackle so that way you can add a little bit more color to those areas where the crackle is. You don't want to add too much because you don't want to fill in that crackle. If you see the bottom how I kind of went over with a little bit more paint on that bottom part and it erased it, you don't want that. So when you're going over the crackle and you're trying to kind of solidify the color and bring everything together, just do a little bit of a dry brush or a dabbing technique. Before I move on to all the other drawers, I'm going to actually just paint the frame around where the drawers will go in. This will look a lot better so that way if I open and close my drawers, then you won't see anything. Now with all the ornate pieces, what I'm doing here is I'm using a makeup brush and I'm kind of just dabbing in those little crevices so that I can fill it in with the paint, but I'm not erasing my crackle. So I'm just kind of dabbing it in there and then that is what I do for all the areas that are kind of hard to reach. Okay, so right here, I'm just applying some crackle with a cheap chip brush on the other drawer fronts because I am now done with the top drawers and the body. So I wanna show you, cause these drawers are a little bit more flat. So you can see the crackle right here and it's dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my paint like I did before and I'm gonna load my brush up a little bit and go in one direction. I'm not gonna overwork it, I'm just do one direction. And what I'm doing on these drawer fronts is I'm just going over all the areas with crackle so that I can activate that first before I move on to the next step. So you can actually see it right here, how the crackle is already starting to work.
For this next part, I just took a heat gun to the area with the crackle really quick, just to show you how it's going to look once it actually does its thing. Don't use a heat gun. I'm just doing this for the video sake so that I can show you a little bit sped up version of how the crackle really starts to take shape over time. But just let it sit. Now look at it. It looks like a hot mess. Hot mess express right here. I promise. We're gonna fix it. Before we move on, I just want to remind you that this color is Drop Cloth by Dixie Belle. This is the only color that I am going to be using on this piece, but I will be doing a color wash and you'll see that in a little bit. We're gonna fix this drawer the same way that I showed you how to fix the other one that had more detail. We're gonna go over all the areas that don't have crackle and we're going to paint them like we normally would. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to butt up against where the crackle is and stipple it to just kind of fill it in and this is going to have to be done twice so i'm going to do this the first time and then after it dries the second time i'm going to go over it so if you see i'm taking paint and i'm going right up against where that crackle is i'm moving my brush so that it can kind of just fill in those areas because we want this to all kind of be cohesive and See, so now I'm kind of dry brushing over it because I don't have a lot of paint. So that's what you want to do. You want to just be smooth and have a light hand when you're doing this so that you can bring everything together. Once I'm done finishing my drawers and they are dry, I'm going to go ahead and distress them and I'm going to smooth them out. So this is one of the fine sanding pads by Surf Prep. After I'm done smoothing everything, I wanna do one final distress. So I add a 220 grit sandpaper onto my Surf Prep 3x4 ray, and I'm smoothing stuff out too, so I can smooth it out and I can distress it. Now I'm gonna create a color wash. So we're gonna do our recipe for our color wash. This color is Mud Puddle by Dixie Belle. I didn't wanna use the brown wax because it was a little too dark. I just want a slight aging for this, and I wanted to bring out some of the details. So I'm gonna do a color wash. I'm gonna pour in just water, just regular tap water into this mud puddle and I'm gonna mix it. This is going to look like chocolate milk. That is what you're gonna want it to look like. You want it to be nice and runny and super thin. Now that I have it the consistency that I want, I'm gonna go ahead and just take another paintbrush and I'm going to just paint over top of it. 
but you wanna make sure that you have a cloth on hand. I like to use microfiber cloths. You can use a paper towel, you can use old t-shirts, whatever you want, something that's soft that you can wipe across the surface and you're not, you know, you don't wanna use obviously steel wool or something super abrasive. Just use something that is soft to wipe this back. So once you have it on, I like to work in sections because remember, even though it's a color wash, it's still a paint. So if it dries, then it's going to dry onto your piece. So I like to work in sections so that way I don't have, it, it doesn't have a chance to dry in some area and then I have to scrub it off. So I'm taking a microfiber cloth and I am wiping it back and you can see how it just does like a nice subtle little aging, beautiful, brings out that ornate look. I also keep my mister bottle on hand just in case it's too dark so you can mist over it and wipe it across again and it'll lighten it up. So if it's too dark, don't worry, just take a mister bottle or you can dampen your rag a little bit and wipe it back even more. And you, so what I like about these color washes is you can really control the look that you get. This is how I do it on the drawer front. So I'm gonna show you, cause it's a little bit flatter of a surface. You know, with the ornate surfaces, it's a little bit easier to put it on and wipe back and get a desired look or more uniform look. So I'm taking my microfiber cloth and I'm wiping it back. And I'm also going to take my mister bottle and mist it and kind of wipe back that stuff that's on the front. You can put some on, you can dampen your rag and you can wipe it back. So you can see that you really can control your look even on a flat surface. Okay, everybody, so this piece is done. I know it's not my normal thing that I normally do, but it is really great for, you can use any colors you want. Of course, this was a custom, so I did the colors that my client wanted, but you could do this finish with any colors, and I just think it's really cool. Let's get up a little bit close. I mean, look at that crackle. Look at that. I mean, come on. That's, this is not just white. This is like... This is still kind of arty, artsy, right? Anyways, I'm gonna have, stay tuned because I'm gonna have some really nice staged pictures right after this so that you guys can see it up close and personal. But again, if you are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out. Everything I use is in the description below. And until next time, happy creating guys. Have an awesome day, bye. To your eyes, I see we're out of time I guess no one's to blame, nobody crossed the line I guess we couldn't see, somehow we couldn't feel Maybe we rose too fast, maybe we got too high